Hi, everyone. We're back here. We're live. FSIN Science Fair Dance. My name is Nathan Arias from Red Pheasant First Nation in the Treaty 6 area. And I'm your co host with my partner here, Willis Janvi. Willis Janvier Hushe Nintelas Tours in La Lache, Saskatchewan, at uh, way up north, Clearwater River Dene Nation, band member of the Isleon Treaty 8 territory. And uh, we join you live in uh, Treaty 6 territory in uh, Saskatoon here today. We are live at the FSIN First Nation Science Fair. We, we're bringing the afternoon part of the program back to you here. And uh, I believe, you know, the we just had a good lunch here. We we're well fed. Chicken. Really, almost like KFC chicken. We had chicken. How do you say chicken in Dene? Kes by. Kes by? Kes by. Kes by. So we had. I even got some dry meat uh, from up north. Yeah. So, yeah, we had a. Well, Willis had one of his uh, listeners there stop in and. Uh, yeah, that was nice to see. Um, so yeah, we got uh, we're getting uh, ready to go here. Round number two of the FSN Science Fair 2022, and uh, Willis or myself are gonna get out there and uh, start interviewing and get everybody. And we're also gonna take you guys into the uh, what do you call those these rooms here? Oh, the uh... Uh, demonstrations of the yeah. science workshops science here. work there's a there's a virtual reality one which is pretty cool i went and checked it out there's also a uh i think that's sit over there saskatchewan indian um what does sit stand for i just went and forgot saskatchewan indian no indigenous i don't know someone tell me what sit stands for again but they're here anyway. They have this actually this plane thing, which I hope you can get in. I might be a little too husky, but if Wills can fit in there, um, it's a virtual or not a virtual flying. I don't know. You learn to fly a plane in there. Uh, so they brought that, and also they have uh, coding thing, uh, coding room over here. So that's pretty interesting. And Wills, can you see that over there, the far one, to the right? I don't know if I can see that, but they have that there. They also have a workshop room over here and then the VR room that we actually want to take you guys to go and visit. And once again, if you guys do have any questions that you do want to ask the uh, youth and their projects or you guys want to uh, know more about the FSN uh, Science Fair, feel free to ask in there and then uh, we will get those questions answered as best as we can. We are going to be bringing on the organizers. We're going to bring on uh, some more youth here to... Uh, Tell us about their uh, projects. We're going to bring on people that are just stopping in okay, to this say is hi. For the grade six so uh, I have to turn that down. So yeah, you guys, don't feel free to uh, answer, uh, ask as many questions as you can. As we want to make this as interactive um, as we can, we want you guys to be able to experience it wherever you are from watching it live. Either you're uh, at home watching it on your TV or or on your cell or wherever. So. Uh, that's where we are in today's world, and this is uh, how we can bring uh, it better to be more interactive. Yeah, Saskatchewan Indian Institute of Technology. Thank you, River. I, uh, Saskatchewan. That, that is actually, um, you know, during the morning there, I uh, the um, the aircraft presentation video, yeah. I believe, uh, the engineering. Uh, I had one of my guests is uh, from up north. He he was part of the program, uh, Richie Robillard, and he was actually in one of the videos there. So, you know, it's a good way to uh, get an education and, and bring it home to your nations. There's so many people in uh, in rural, I guess, Saskatchewan that are, or even you know, just remote flying only that uh, only. What do, you, what do you call it, specific kind of jobs or education you need that you can bring back, you know? But it's in all today, good. In today's world, man, honestly, you need YouTube. And there's so much you can learn online. It, it's, it's, you know, 
I personally believe that uh, we're heading in, into. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think we can just go on YouTube. And be like, no, hey. but I, I, I personally believe we're heading there. That tell me something you can't learn. I know there's a, there's a few things there, obviously, that you can't. But I mean, majority of things in life you can learn from YouTube, right? Anyway, that's another that's another podcast. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna get with it here. We're gonna get uh, walking around here streaming. Uh, everything that's going on uh we are like i said we want to get you guys into the rooms there and uh seeing what's going on there but i mean if you guys are have any any uh way of getting here if you're in the saskatoon area uh please come down here and uh check it out and uh come say hi to the kids and and uh let's uh ex let's uh experience it all together and also share this and yeah like i said we are uh like the banner said we are live on youtube my iops channel if you guys know people that want to check it out but that have no facebook and and uh, they want to watch it so i o p p s on uh youtube sorry you guys hear my thing here i got it yeah i'm trying to teach this guy about streaming eh <laughs> little noises he's trying to teach the og about streaming this guy. <laughs> but he's right i shouldn't I, I shouldn't have that on there yeah so uh yeah get that we got that on video so yeah welcome back uh this afternoon portion of the fsi and first nation science fair hello linnea let me know if you got a package for your grandmother there uh catherine moise uh inbox me and uh we're gonna take it over i believe i'm gonna go or are you gonna yeah. go so i'm gonna go over to uh chad with the youth you know and uh these uh youth and uh are gonna get thrown out like the cell phone here in a second <laughs> uh, and we're gonna talk to them about their projects and uh so it's gonna be a lot of fun if you got any questions or anything you want to uh, ask, throw it in the comments. Don't be shy. You know, these are uh, kids from all over Saskatchewan. I believe all over Saskatchewan. We should get a list of uh, which nations are being represented here. And uh, because if you win this um, science fair here today, you get to go to the national level. So, which is pretty cool. You know, it's, it do, just doesn't end here. So, one of the things we were talking about earlier was that uh, trying to have that traditional knowledge, you know, traditional scientific knowledge uh, and having a fair to uh, showcase, you know, that's something that would be uh, a lot of fun. You know, and pretty interesting to see as well because... Uh, you know, in our own nations, <clears throat> excuse me, in our own nations, you know, we had our own uh, medicine people, you know, the people, the star people, all of those stories. So it would be pretty cool to bring that on and have a, a big giant fair because everything is opening up again and we get to hang out with each other and see p people physically and also uh you know we get to bring this live for you for uh streaming any kind of events you know if you're in uh, another province or want to see what's going on what are they doing in saskatchewan well here it is today live at the prairie land park hall b if you are in saskatchewan hall a hall a sorry hall a if you're in Saskatoon, come on down, say hi. You get to meet Nathan Arias, Mr. Iops there. And, you get uh, to meet this guy, never mind me, this and, guy. And then, uh, yeah, it was good to see meet Daryl there. I don't know where he went, to, but, uh, you know, he was, he's was he been a listener. He lives in the East Coast, so, you know, I don't... Uh, it's always cool when I get to meet my listeners. And Okay, brother, time to head out there. Time to head out here. All right, Willis is going to do his thing. Let's do a test on the mic real quick. Go again. Oh, my bad here. Did I plug in the right one? All right, so. Testing one, two, three, eight, nineteen. 
nothing. Hold on, you guys. Give us a sec here. Testing. Testing. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Give us a sec here, ladies and gentlemen. Testing one. Testing. Just getting the mics here ready to go. Walk around here today, and then uh, we're going to chat with some of the uh, the participants here from the FSI and First Nations Science Fair. And it looks like we are live on this camera, I believe. Okay. I don't know if uh, this Tyler guy likes to talk. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to skip him right now. <laughs> oh, no, just kidding. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we're just going to go around here. And uh, which uh, grades are they judging right now? I think sevens. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I think uh, we're going to go over this side here and, and talk to some of the participants in the far end. I know we've got some uh, kids from Birch Narrows Dene Nation here joining us here today. Um, so, yeah, let's see what we can find here. Oh, these young ladies looks like they want to go live here. No? Come on, don't be shy. Just tell me real quick. Okay? Real quick? Yeah. <laughs> okay, tell me your names. Tia. Tia? Mm hmm Sophia Benjo. <laughs> Where are you girls from? Muscapeding. Muscapeding. Kisakus. Muscapedon and Kisaku. So uh, just tell me real quick your what is uh, your project about? No, I'm always speaking. <laughs> it's about hunting and gathering. It's hunting and gathering? So what uh, made you guys decide uh, you know to do a project on hunting and gathering? Um I don't know. You just wanted to pick berries? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Did you pick them fresh or you go to Walmart? I go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I go to. It's a lot of fun. Easy. You don't have to get down on your knees and go through bushes. <laughs> hey? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Did you guys uh, get judged already? What is this? Yeah. Okay. You're all done for the day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you guys, uh, what, what did you place? Oh, they didn't tell us yet. Oh, he didn't tell you yet? No. Okay. All righty. Well, good luck. We'll see you guys later. And now, so, you guys uh, want to go live? Talk about your presentation a bit. Real quick, just walk us, give us your names and uh, tell us your presentation. Um, I'm Delilah, and that's Sasha. Delilah? Delilah. I'm Sasha. Delilah and Sasha. What is uh, your presentation here? Our presentation is about how do natural herbs cure uh, COVID-19 or help uh, relieve the symptoms. 
Oh, nice. That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, so what are some of the things you use to uh, help, you know, alleviate some of the symptoms? Um, there's diamond willow fungus and chaga. And as well as rat root, it helps relieve your digestive system, headaches, um, your loss of breath, and some say it helps retrieve your um, your taste buds and your smell. Oh, nice, nice. I, I had COVID and uh, I did lose my taste buds and my, my smell too. What Which one of the, uh, I guess, herbs was the most effective, did you find? Uh, we found that diamond willow fungus was more effective than uh, chaga and rat root. It uh, helped relieve um, our COVID-19 patients' uh, achy, achy joints, uh, headache, uh, sore throats, and uh, what was it? Her swelling and her legs went down, and she got her uh, taste buds back. Oh, nice. And I was using the diamond willow and chaga. Oh, nice. Where do you get the diamond willow? The diamond willow is found on birch trees and it's found um, up north. Oh, nice. You're near from Muscapeding. Yes. Yeah. Do you, do you get a lot of these, uh, you know, herbs around uh, your nation? Um, some, yes. Um, but some are also hard to find. And you can you can only pick them at a specific time of season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, thank you, uh, Tia and or Delilah. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. I get so many names here, but uh, Sasha and Delilah for sharing that with me. Good luck. Okay, what do we got? We got uh, the history and culture behind the mist. Is that Cree? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you girls uh, want to go live here and chat for a bit about uh, the drum? Yeah, sure. Sure, cool. I like when uh, they're willing to go live and, and talk about. So we'll just get your names here real quick. Um, I'm Kyrie Morasti. I'm from Flying Dust First Nation. I'm Shanae Gladju. I'm also from Flying Dust First Nation. Okay, cool, cool. Nice to meet you. Well, I'm uh, Willis, and we're live here on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, talk. tell us about uh, your presentation here. Well, as you can see, it's the history and culture behind the drum. So on Cree, drum would be Mysticoas. We just... Mysticoasic. Mysticoasic. Wasic? Yeah. Mystic was sick. Mystic was sick. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, what was uh, you know, what was the uh, reason behind you know doing about a presentation about the drum or doing the research? Well, since when we were in school, right? They said we can do land based, and so when I thought of land based, we were actually gonna go with a different idea that Kyrie had, but our teacher said we couldn't really go with it because we didn't have like something to represent it. Yeah. Okay. And we were gonna do a what if oh, no, snow no. was black. <laughs> but I mean, it was okay, but we just, yeah, no hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And right when I thought of land-based, I thought it was either gonna be a canoe or something else. But I remember that I had actually a connection to the drum. And they had many stories, and I basically grew up knowing a lot about my culture, but not really. Mm -hmm. So I thought might as well go with something that I don't really know about, but I know about it enough to share it. Cool, cool. I, I see you got uh, some messages from the drum there. What are some of those uh, teachings and messages that you carry with you and you share with people here today? One of them says, like when you're holding a drum and you're going to play it, never hit it with anger. It's basically a representing as a beating to women because as some people know, drums have a spirit and most of the spirits are women. So if you're playing it, yeah, imagine that spirit 
and you banging it and hitting it with anger, you're basically beating up a woman. Mm. And you wouldn't want to do that. Especially to something so sacred. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good stuff. You know, that's a very powerful message. Uh, you know, who... Uh, when building a drum, how, do, how does one go about building a drum? When, well, you got to get the animal first, right? Mm -hmm. And there's different kinds. As you can see, there's buffalo, elk, deer. There's also mm -hmm. moose and horse. But this specific drum is made of um, deer hide. And this drum was, <clears throat> sorry, was gifted to my brother when he was three years old. Um, my mom bought it from a guy and, um, I forget what it's called. It's red something. And he red got it. When he, yes. Yes, exactly. And, um, this, she bought a couple weeks ago and it's from a person in Quebec and he has a Facebook where you can buy drum kits. Like you're asking how to make one. Mm -hmm. Like people can buy kits for them and you can make your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. Well, did you uh, girls get judged already? We need two more, though. Okay, okay. Well, I wish you all the best and good luck. Thank, Thank you, you for, uh, you know, talking to me. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay. What do we got? Are we all good over there? What do you think? We got a thumbs up. I want to go over to... Where do we got? Keno Lake. Dante, you want to chat here real quick? Well, hello. Uh, my name's Leighton Wensley. I'm a teacher in Canoe Lake at Mixu School. And um, I brought a student here today, Jared Iron, to uh, share with the people uh, knowledge on how to tan moose hide. Um, I'm trying to recall. Here he comes. He's going to take over the interview. Okay. He's the man with the knowledge. And um, we're just very grateful to be here today. And um, if there's one thing I walk away from this uh, seminar today with is that I learned something about the rattle. I thought it was just a rattle, but this is actually the shape of a comet that comes to earth that distributes the material or the seeds that make us. So I was blown away to learn that story today. So no longer is this just a rattle. This is a comet bringing material from the cosmos down to the surface of the earth. So now it has a whole new different meaning to me. Wow. So um, I like how I'm seeing a lady over there link our language, words in our language to modern atomic theory. And she was very keen to explain to me that we've lost these words through assimilation. And we had the same kind of scientific knowledge that you see uh, European washed, um, but those words were taken away from us. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely going to ask that lady to come to our school to share this information. She works for, uh, I'm not trying to promote a government agency, but it's great to see that they're bringing the cultural perspective into uh, organizations like the Canadian Light Source. Yeah. And, and um, she's a pivotal part. And they actually pair her with, with a scientist. And they travel together to share and combine their knowledge. You know, and that's what I see here. I see uh, a, a validation and, and, and a great way to legitimize our traditional knowledge as being just as good, just as useful as all the, you know, procedural uh, European science that we practice today. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'll hand the mic over to my student because I'm just his driver. Already, yeah. Thank Thanks you, here. thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, who is this lady? I, I want to go find her. Uh, where, Bernie, where's Bernie Petit? She okay, okay. Atomic light in room. Okay, okay. But her presentation was amazing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm gonna... The phonetics of the language itself are the words for math and for atomic theory, but we've lost it. Hmm. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So we're gonna go over to uh, Jared. Jared Iron. So, hey, uh, we'll get you to introduce. Tanse uh, Kia, my name is uh, Jared, uh, Jared Iron. I'm from Canoe Lake Narrows, Saskatchewan. And yeah, and I'm a grade 12. Grade 12. Nice. Are you related to Jared Iron? Yes. Yeah, that's is me. It, yeah. No, is uh, Jared the older, oh, the, the hockey? Older Jared? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but the, the people get mixed up uh, between me and him, eh? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So tell us a bit about uh, your uh, 
presentation or uh, what, what do you call this? Uh, uh, this is uh, moose hide tanning. There's there's two there's two ways to tan hide. This this way is the Western way. It uses that uh, orange bile chemicals, and this those are the steps on the traditional way. Those like use like from the land and smoking and braining, using the brain for like waterproof stuff for the hide. And then right there, that little trend, I tried to represent the uh, the moose hide being stretched, but mm -hmm. just being too small. And yeah, those are the pictures. Wearing it and smoking it and and yeah, uh, getting the hide off and everything. Yeah. But yeah, and but um, I was supposed to have a partner that I was supposed to do this side, but uh, I guess he bailed out because uh, his uh, funeral, his oh, mushroom's okay. funeral. So. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. So, what was the uh, you know, why did you want to make uh, uh, tell the story about the, the moose hide? Uh, what's that part? Why did you want to do a presentation and find uh, you know about making a moose hide? Oh, and uh, my uh, my uh, my science teacher uh, really forced me to do this, so yeah. I didn't really want to do it. But then, after I got into it, I was just really enjoying it and just learning about the moose side and everything and the steps in the traditional way and the Western way. Mm -hmm. Cool, good stuff. And what was the I guess the hypothesis of your project here, and what what was uh, learned? Like what method works better, or you know, like the the brain tanning. Uh, or is it the Western way of hide tanning? Uh, I I would prefer the traditional way, like all it takes, like but the traditional takes at least over a month to do, mm -hmm. and the Western takes like at least two weeks, less than a, less than a week. But I prefer the traditional way because it's it's better to do it and it smells better. Smells better, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it smokes better too yeah. than yeah. using the traditional. That orange bottle just doesn't do good too. Yeah, you can uh, you can just smell it a mile away when you've got uh, real moose hide, eh? Yeah, being smoked. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Did you go through the process of making your own? Uh, no, not really. But I've been but I've been through it where I've been uh, fleshing it. That's all. Just that, that's the only step I, I ever got to do was uh, flesh uh, flesh a moose hide at the school there. Oh, nice. So are you gonna be doing that this summer? You think? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna try to go hunting and try to get my own moose and 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 do and do it the traditional way. Okay. Cool. Well, good luck in your project here, and yeah, uh, thank, thank you. you for chatting with me. Oh yeah, yes, sir. Anytime. Anytime. I hope from Keno Lake all the way up north there, we got uh, Jared Iron here. The lady right there is the expert on language and atomic theory. Okay. 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 Short okay. Hair. okay. Incredible. Incredible knowledge. Okay, cool. I want to chat with her. Okay, we're going to go over here to uh, Birch Narrows Dene Nation. Do you? Actually, we're going to go over somewhere else because uh, they've got to do some judging there. And uh, we've got, you know, learn quite some new neat things about the drum and the moose hide and how everything comes together you see uh over here we've got uh you know the physical science of uh the different categories i guess and then we've got uh, traditional knowledge for all this section so we're going to learn about all the different roots and grass and all the traditional teachings and then uh, I've got physical science here. So we're, they're doing some judging. And um, so we've got to uh, watch who... Did he get judged already? No? You want to chat real quick? Get ready? Say tap way. Tap way? Tap way. Okay. Real quick. Where are you, where are you girls from? George Gordon's First Nation. And what are your names? Megan and Angel. Megan and Angel. So uh, just share with us your uh, talk about your uh, project here. Um, Got to get prepared for your presentation. Well, judging. It's the importance of drinking water. So what is the importance of drinking water? What What did you find uh, in your conclusion or your hypothesis? Get that one. <laughs> um, um, uh, I don't know. 
Water is better than Pepsi? <laughs> no. Pepsi. Eh? <laughs> no? No. Or Pepsi is better than water? <laughs> what, uh, what, which water did you test? Uh, which type of bottle water? Spring water, and that's just regular natural spring water from Safeway. And then George Gordon's tap water. Mm -hmm. So, what were the some of the differences between uh, the two findings? The TCI and the bottled water is zero point five. And then the elk is 80 for the one. No, it's 180 for the bottled water. And the pH on the bottled water is 8.4. And then the TH for the bottled water is 100. And then the tap water, the TCI is zero. The elk is 80. And then the pH is 6.8, and then the TH is zero. All oh, right, on, right on. Okay, well, good luck on uh, your project, and I hope you girls win. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're going to go over back to Nathan here, and uh, we'll get back to you once we get the judging settled a bit. Uh, we'll bring you back some more projects, more students, participants to chat with. All right. Thank you, Willis. She's coming back here. And uh, there you guys have it. We had Willis there interviewing some of the students there. And, hey, give, I got to give credit to the ones that are that want to put their face on here because it is nerve-wracking. You know, like I said, to have a, a mic, you know, and a camera right there. At the same time, you have other people watching, and these kids are uh, nervous as the, uh, they are already because they're getting they're about to get judged with their science projects. So, um, good job, Willis, as usual. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll probably out there, go out there next, or Willis will go out there, one of us again, and then we'll get uh, continue on with the uh, with uh, everything. Sorry, I should have had that. I didn't even see that was on. Uh, so, we, there we go. We've got some of the. Uh, science fair projects in the background and yes barb uh nut maker said boy these young people make me proud uh who that's you know it's 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 so amazing to see what uh some of these kids come up with uh their their thinking thinking process behind everything on here so uh big shout out to them and all the teachers i know it's hard work because i've I work at a school and I see what these kids put in there, the energy um, behind that. It's just, uh, it's amazing to see, um, you know. So what did you get out of that, Willis? Oh, we're going in the back here now. What is this again? This is... Uh, these are uh, science workshops in different ways. Uh, wow. This I didn't get to. It's uh, just artwork that was, uh, it says right there, innovative imaging. You know what? I'm going to go in there and interview those guys. Yeah, uh, here we go. I believe. Testing, so, can you hear me? So, uh, Nathan is going to go over there. And, uh, you know, very. Uh, can you hear me? Nathan was talking about, uh, you know, the youth that are. Well, it's thumbs up. Very uh, uh, a bit timid and shy, you know, and uh, it, it's all good. You know, it's not easy to uh, go up and talk right. with them and, you know, kind of uh, to encourage. We're going to go over to Nathan here. Hear me? I hope we're good to go. Just going to go now. I want to go back to this thing over here. I'm going to get back to you guys. You guys are going to okay with get interviewed? Right on. Right on. So no one knows that we are live still, so... We're doing good, but uh, I was really captivated by this little, uh, color and the eagle and then the buffalo. Got the turtle, turtle island. Got the polar bear. 
Are we allowed to touch these? You guys know her. <laughs> On display, but don't touch. Anyway. Innovative imaging. Recycle, reuse, reinvent. This company is owned and managed by a group of young students that participate in the AEC Business Club program at One Arrow First Nations. These young youth are doing their part to help save the environment by turning cabinet doors, fence boards, and wood that would be otherwise be destined for the landfill into the beautiful pieces of Indigenous artwork. The artwork can be custom corporate and business needs by adding professional laser engraved logos. So there you guys go. This is all owned by youth from One Arrow First Nation. And and it's all recycled, so they're already doing something for uh, the environment. Um, so amazing. I'm just, I'm amazed like this, uh, what I'm looking at right now. Like I said, I really like this eagle. And I want to see if I can buy it. Um, but yeah, you guys can get a hold of them. Zoom into that number, 306-873-9085. There's an email there, 73-9085. And remember, you always want to support Indigenous business, especially the youth. Especially the youth, we always want to support the Indigenous youth. So there we go, 3R Innovative Imaging. Amazing work. All right, so where are we going to go first? We'll go over here. We'll go over here. Dance. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. All right. So I'm going to hand the mic over because I, I don't want to do that. So we're going to just want you guys to uh, introduce yourselves and uh, tell you what you're displaying here. We'll start here. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Adam McInnes. I'm a PhD student at the University of Saskatchewan and a medical graduate from the University of Saskatchewan's College of Medicine. And I'm also president of the Saskatoon Métis Local 126, which is Métis Local in the city that supports Métis post-secondary students, staff, and faculty. I'm uh, Valor Nopelche, Nehio Esqueo. I'm the senior lead of Indigenous programming and initiatives with the College of Medicine. And I do a lot of work with the admissions program and lots of other areas in the College of Medicine. Hello, I'm Cheryl Buchert, the Admissions Coordinator for the College of Medicine. And I uh, do a lot of work with our um, incoming medical students and also pre-med students that are wanting to enter the college. Sorry, you go. Going on here. <laughs> so we got a bunch of different displays set up here. Uh, about things that we do within the College of Medicine. So we've got an anatomical model here. You can disassemble all the different stuff and see the organs and give you some idea what you look like on the inside. We have some different stuff here for doing different parts of the physical exam. Uh, like we've got tuning forks for doing hearing tests. We've got reflex hammers, all kinds of different things. We've got blood pressure cuffs here, stethoscopes, suture kits. So basically we're just trying to give students uh, an opportunity to see or learn a little bit more about medicine, uh, see what the opportunities are, um, see the possibilities, and get them interested in medicine and get them interested in science in general. I, I'm sorry, I had to really quick. Do you want to uh, add to that? Sure. I just want to point out some of our wonderful, wonderful uh, role models behind us here. We've got um, Jackie, who's in her third year of medicine. And uh, she's from Papikasi's First Nation, well on her way. And then we've got Ami Prefontaine, who's Métis, and she's now in her, uh, I think she's in her first year or second year of residency. Yeah, end of her first year of residency. So very proud of our wonderful role models. And um, yeah. Oh yeah, and Hannah St. Denis from Beardy's Okimasa's First Nation. Hannah went into plastic surgery, and she's finished now. And uh, we're really hoping that she comes home to Saskatchewan. All right, I want to thank you guys for uh, giving that brief uh, introduction and then telling us uh, what is needed. So there are a lot of kids coming here to you being interested. I know it's hard to, like, intimidating to 
want to be a doctor, you know, it's like you think you got to be super, super smart, but it's like you got to have the heart and goal to yeah. get in there and do it, right? Be willing to work hard, study hard, and yeah, and we're here to help through all the processes. Exactly. There's always help there, you guys, if you're interested to do something like this. It's uh, we're never alone in any aspect, right? So, thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're going on to agriculture in the classroom. All right, thank you. Uh, so we're going to hear the agriculture in the classroom. We are live right now, so just so you guys know, it's not being recorded. It's actually live. <laughs> Putting them on the spot, eh? So who are you? Introduce yourself. I'm Emma Mollenbeck, and I'm a program coordinator. I'm Susan Jorgensen. I'm the program manager with Egg in the Classroom. Susan and Emma. All right. So, can you guys tell us what, uh, why you got dirt here? Dirt here that don't look like no res dirt. It looks like it's pretty good. All right. Potting mix. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, we have um, potting mix that's here, and students are invited to come and plant a little micro take home with them. So, um, with a bit of potting mix in the cup, they can add seeds, and these seeds are just intended to grow as micro greens. And so it takes about somewhere between seven to 10 days to grow, and then they just clip them to harvest them. So these are great to have either in a classroom or at home. They take up very little space. All of the nutrients that the plant needs to grow are within the seed. And then uh, because they're only growing to a microgreen stage, the plants themselves are quite nutrient dense. So um, they've got a lot of flavor. They've got a lot of like vitamins and other compounds that are nutritious but then they are also not needing a lot of input. So you don't need a lot of land to grow these. You don't need specialized lights to grow these. So it does kind of create an opportunity to um, grow some of your own food without a lot of inputs. And especially if you're growing in the winter, um, we're hopefully just coming around the corner that winter's <laughs> ending here and we can get outside and grow, but um, our growing season is so short here. So then it is offering an opportunity to build some food security when you can produce some of your own food. Yes. That's, That's about the soil, soil. yeah. <laughs> um, is there, is, are you guys, uh, is there any programs for uh, on reserve that uh, that teaches, like you guys go and show how to properly grow? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our programming is available for K to 12 across the province, whether it's reserve schools, urban schools, we're happy to come out. And our job is to really get kids curious and inspired to care about where their food comes from. So learning to grow plants is such an important part of where our food comes from. So we would love to come in and talk about um, why the soil looks the way it does or why soil is important for growing plants and how healthy plants come from healthy soil, but then it results in healthy people. We can talk about um, yeah, nutrition. We can talk about farming practices, food production, anywhere kind of from seed to table. We're just really excited now especially that we're getting back in person with kids yes. and we can go into schools and do hands-on activities we offer resources for teachers to be able to um, access some of this just on their own in classrooms as well and everything that we offer for classrooms or for teachers is free awesome. yeah we got a <laughs> shazi Attention. so uh if you Shazip? have been judged here for the grade six Shazip. sevens and eights oh, looks like he's from lac larange yep so I'm teacher in one of the like Lagrange schools. So I just wanted to ask. Uh, I just wanted to ask. Uh, you mentioned about uh, extracting the DNA from strawberries. So yeah. if you can please explain a little bit about that. Oh. Extracting the DNA from one of these yummy strawberries. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so again, talking about food security, we're talking about plant genetics and why it's really important for us to understand traits and growing needs in different plants and how maybe sometimes we can sort of use the instructions from one plant to help another kind of plant grow really well or need fewer inputs, increase yield. So here students were squishing up some strawberries. So just a couple of strawberries squashed really well here to kind of make these cells really accessible. And then they're mixing in this extraction solution, which is dish soap. So it's a detergent and salt. And so this will help lyse the cells or cut them open. And it lets all of the nucleic acids with the DNA out into the mixture. And then they were filtering it through, it's just a coffee filter on a plastic cup, 
but this will catch all the solid strawberry stuff and just let the, um, the cells and solution come through. And then they add in um, 10 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. So this is just rubbing alcohol and you pour, already got rid of your strawberry goo, pour this in here. And then it causes the um, strands of DNA to kind of flock together, to cut into a big lump so you can see it. Can I stop you right there? How long would it actually take you to do this right now if we got a demo? We're going to get a demo here. We're going to get a demo live here on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. A, lot of, a bunch of people just getting them more nervous. Say there's 10 million people watching. No. So we're going to do this live here. We're going to extract DNA. Yeah, we're extracting DNA from strawberries. So we use strawberries because they have a lot of DNA. So people have two sets of chromosomes, all mammals do, and strawberries have six. So you can really get a good glob of nucleic acid. So this, like I said, is detergent and salt and water that are mixed together. And I'm pouring it into this squished up strawberry. And then I'll just kind of rinse it around a little bit. And so what's happening right now is the detergent and the salt are interrupting the cell walls and they're letting all of the insides of the cells out, which includes the nucleic acids and the DNA. So I'm gonna try and filter out the solid stuff and keep the liquid. Blender and uh, there's some, uh, yeah, you can do it in a blender. You can. This one just is like we didn't need a lot of supplies and we didn't need electricity, so it's a pretty rudimentary way of doing it, but it works. But you can do, you do things like lentils or pea seeds in a blender. You can actually do your own cheek cells in the same way too to look at your own DNA if you want to. <laughs> that is wild. You guys just heard that here first, Siri. If you want to look at your own DNA. You just need this soap. <laughs> yeah. And contact lens solution. And contact lens solution, which by chance it, somebody's always looking for to try to borrow contact lens solution. So I'm just going to strain some of this off. This part takes a little bit of time, but it's kind of gooey. So, so that's the DNA right there? Well, this is actually all of the cell contents. So this is that soap and salt solution, but then all of the stuff that was inside the strawberry cells is now outside because the solution broke the cells open and we're squishing out all the stuff that should be enough and smells good you literally you smell it you smell strawberries and dish soap <laughs> it's, like it's a wild mix okay so this is just isopropyl alcohol and it's cold can you say it real slow for oh, sure isopropyl alcohol so rubbing alcohol isopropyl alcohol you got it and it's cold and the cold just helps it do a better job of gathering all that DNA together. So I'm gonna pour it in here. And then give it a quick little minute. And see, it's getting sort of like, you can see there's a bubbly layer that's sort of slimy. That sort of clear slimy layer that's on the top there. Those are the nucleic acids. So the DNA is in there. And this. Oh, it looks like totally, a booger. Totally. <laughs> so that's a DNA? That's, yeah, that's DNA. There you go. There's Get in on that. Get on Zoom on that. <laughs> so DNA looks like, honestly, it looks like snot, yeah. but it's uh, strawberry, DNA. strawberry DNA. That's wild. And it smells like this soap and strawberry. <laughs> yeah. Not so, not so gross after all. Wow, that is pretty cool. That is uh, really cool, actually. I appreciate it. That was uh, that was. I didn't expect that. So, well, thank you again, and uh, we'll probably come back here sooner or later. So, thank you. All right, all right. There you guys go. Uh, strawberry DNA was uh, is uh, extracted. So we're gonna talk with some elders here, Mister Roland Duquette. Yes. Don't say long time. Oh, we're so we're live right now. So uh, yeah, if you want to uh, say a few words about uh, the whole FSN Science Fair and uh, all that and what you think of the youth, their learning and showing their skill. Yeah, I, th I think uh, it's important that <clears throat> we utilize elders and uh, with their capacity here in things like this, eh? Because it, it, uh, it reinforces the... Um, uh, 
the culture that we have, you know, how rich it was, and now we're losing most of the things that are important, eh? like uh, the science itself is self-explanatory because it, it it does the research deeper than uh, because they have the the working, say the machines, the the tools. But for us as well, you know, we we had the same compatible uh, teachings uh, through time. Eh? Like a berry, eh? for example, we were talking about meanness. Eh? Meanness is a berry itself. Eh? And when you look at it, there's different, uh, uh, I guess, it color chains, and you know how what color they are going to be, eh? and what, how does the stem look, you know, from one berry to another, like blueberries, say for example, inimini, blueberries. Again, the again the the, the berry stalks are more uh, closer to the ground, eh? But basically, they're the same uh, kind of grouping, the blueberries, the Saskatoon berries, and uh, those other other berries that uh, there are, you know, not much seeds in them. Like choke cherries, for example, uh, they, they have their own uh, kind of uh, space, eh? And uh, in terms of uh, the real word for that is Misaskoto min is meaning one Saskatoon berry. That's why, you know, the misconception of the city of Saskatoon, it has no meaning, just the word Saskatoon. Eh? If you're going to be real about it and real technical, the real word for Saskatoon is Misaskoto uh, min, meaning Misaskoto min. That's what it means, eh? Because you're losing the flavor when you just say Saskatoon, eh? And you're, they're isolating your your knowledge of the word, the full word, the full impact of the word, eh? What it means. So all those things, you know, they they kind of vary in, uh, you know, I don't know how much consulting was done to to use that name, eh? And even Saskatchewan, eh? Saskatchewan itself is. Uh, Again, another word that kind of uh, is not totally given the whole meaning. Isokichuak, eh? Nipika sokichuak, the run, the swift running water, eh? Ogachi ekisi kotek nipi, meaning that uh, when it's uh, when it's raining, it flows fast, eh? So, but not not in the sense of a, a river flowing, eh? You use that for uh, creeks, uh, rivers. So you're, there's always a distinction of each meaning. Eh? That's why for me, when I talk about uh, Saskatoon, I always say, you know, I'm from over here. Eh? That's what I say. Eh? So anyway, I'm getting, I'm learning a lot you know, from these youth because the uh, what they put in is their effort, you know, coming into a, a setting like this, being away from their home environment. They recall a lot of these stories that they're relating through their projects. See, eh? and I think more should be done in uh, in the um, in the school systems. Eh, when we when we know that uh, you know how can we adapt our cultures, our traditions through, uh, you know, science, eh? Those are not explained enough how we're going to adapt to that uh, uh, credibility of, of our people knowing that they've had these, you know, eons ago. It's just surfacing now, you know, through uh, science. You know, science is kind of taking over, but yet we have to be part of that inclusion eh, as elders and as people eh, of, of the language. Each language grouping have their own uh, way of interpreting uh, maybe laws, uh, you know, we don't know. Like the spiritual laws, the, the common laws. So we have to be aware of those things. Where do they fit? And when the, when the grass, are, they say they're dead, eh, they're just going back and 
further into the ground to, to rest, eh? In our belief, eh? So when, when the first, uh, you know, thaw comes out from the ground and the, wa the water comes in into that, into that uh, seed or plant, it wakes it up. Eh? It wakes up, the, the plant turns around and it gets that supplement of water to come out of that where the water came in from. They sprout as a, as a grass, a flower, a leaf or yeah, things like that, eh? But yet scientists trying to tell us, you know, that's evolution, eh? No, it's, it's a, a creation. That's what it is for us, eh? It's our belief. So hopefully that helps you a little bit to uh, hear from an elder that, uh, you know, kind of routinely, you know, tells stories like that, you know, to reinforce our, our um, identity, you know, more so than not being overwhelmed, like, you know, put in a, in a corner, and not count, eh? So for me, that's that's what I believe in, eh? So I thank you for that, you know, your concern and uh, your input, because we all need that, eh? And I find uh, the students are feeling real com comfortable with their, you know, among themselves coming from different territories, eh? Different communities. And it really helping them to, uh, to relate, to be, you know, like uh, interacting. So that's uh, that's one thing I noticed, eh? and we need more of that interaction. Maybe bring him, bringing them to the university to, you know, on on trips, you know, this the like in the springtime, you know, bring as many as we can, eh? Because we need to uh, show them, you know, that there's a different world here, eh? We need to introduce them into that uh, uh, society of a different uh, culture as well, eh? But yet maintaining our, our way of life to know that there are people working in that capacity to greet us, uh, to, to help us along in our, in our ways of uh, learning, eh? Indigenizing, I guess, is more the word I want to use on that. Yeah, so that's, that's a very important word because it, it's an, there's an influence in that word because, you know, it, it brings all, everybody together to know Oh, what's that word and what does it mean? You know, what can I learn from that? So they open a door for us. Eh? We don't have to uh, make our way forcefully in some areas, you know. But it's just a matter of the storytelling, the awareness of these things that have happened, again, eons ago. Eh? So that's my, what, what I see happening eh? as an elder, you know, and I, I really enjoy that, those times because the interest has to come in to the outside, you know, because we are the ones that are are walking that road, walking that walk, walking that story. We are the ones that make that impact, even through language. So when I start talking Cree like that, I say, how many of you understood that? And they'll no hands up. Do you understand me? And I say, I understand you because I adopted your language, the English language. I, I can interpret that with my language to tell you this is what it means. But as if for them to, to translate what they heard they can have that capacity, eh? They, because there, there's a block there that they don't understand, eh? So it's understanding a language, it's understanding a people, a culture, a ceremonies, a tradition, all those, they apply to that you know, grounding of our, of our uh, Mother Earth, eh? Because we are, we're alive, we walk with it, eh? When we, when we walk on land, eh? That's why it's important in the springtime we take our shoes and socks off and walk the land of the grass. Get the feel of that energy. Eh? You ground yourself. Even when you're dancing powwow, eh? that's where I get my energy. When I'm you know, dancing for my, my Mother Earth, eh? I gain that spirit within me that connects every time I take a step. 
and it feels good. Eh? That's where that that drum you can feel it in your heart, eh? And it helps you to stay healthy when you're dancing like that, eh? It doesn't take no uh, gym, no no workout in a gym to make you feel better. This is what it, it's a natural uh, gymnasium we have, eh? Every which way we can go slow, we can do our own pace and yet feel good. So that's that's the the, the trade off that we have, eh? That's what we want people to understand where we are, eh? Where we are at the moment, eh? If I cannot apply myself to that way of wanting to know more about my land, you know, my mother earth, you know. I may as well stay home and not do anything. Because once you start bringing that adrenaline in your body, it goes to your head and it just works something in your mind that it ref refreshes eh, your your whole, whole being. So that's a kind of a kind of comparison of a, of these healthy lifestyles that we try to maintain, eh? And when you're when somebody's sick as as well, you know, that in the, on the spiritual side of our culture, is when somebody's sick, we pray, we dance for that person, well-being and their family. Eh? It goes beyond, beyond, beyond. Eh? So we're not without any limitations of, oh, I'm just going to pray for this one. No, it helps you to, to rejuvenate and say, hey, I got, I can go here, I can go over there. Because distance, there's no distance greater, you know, that you can't not make that, you know, visit through the, through your spirit or through your mind. So that's uh, hopefully that helps you a little bit to to know that uh, you know we we are here for a purpose, eh? and I'm so happy that I was included. <laughs> Well, the last common question me a big question is that so I am not going to sell my stock up in Sikasik Musum Nog. My Indian name is Old Lady Brown Bear, and science to me is. The science fair is a revival of how we used to be. We lived this. We knew the old stories, the galaxies, the, the plants. We always knew how to use them. And this is, I see as a revival of our way of life from way back when. Only now, Munyao is switching it like it's theirs but it was always ours. We always knew from stories from way back. We've always had this, I'll call it instinctual knowledge. <laughs> like I was, I'm a medicine woman and our, our children learning about the medicines, their uses, you know, it just touches. Yeah touches the heart and how like this mother earth you know um, right now it's resting it's just trying to wake up and there are all these complaints about oh, the weather oh she needs rest longer like you know we've always been told there's always a purpose like with all the destruction they're doing to Mother Earth. Hey, she needs that extra little bit of rest. And I guess uh, let her rest for a little while longer. Like, then she can, when she's ready to wake up, she will, and she'll be rested and be ready to grow our our plants that we need to sustain us. And the water, like 
the snow is turning into water, replenishing Mother Earth because it's been so dry. Like our rivers are going to be a little deeper this year. And the soil is going to be richer because it has moisture. And I see this, like I, I'm so honored to be asked. I'm. This is going on my second year with the science. And it was always virtual. And it's the first time I'm actually meeting face to face, <laughs> like. I can actually see people, hug people. Aksan Maptaman, I'm not really a spokesperson. <laughs> Give me a, something else, but you know, I'll, I'll let you know. But today, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Loretta, Roland. Yep. Hi, hi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll come back to you in a bit here. But uh, there we go, uh, wise words from our elders. So, hey, hey, and we'll see you guys soon. Well, yeah, thank you guys. So we're going to roll out here. It's always good to uh, hear what our elders say and, uh, you know, just, uh, you just listen. You know, you listen and you take all that knowledge in and and uh, it's 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 nice to hear, like Roland was saying, with the energy, you know, from the pow and they touching the ground, you know, just with their moccasins or barefoot, you know, and and they they tell you too here's a little tip if you guys have anxiety a good thing you can do if you you might have heard the term already is to ground yourself so you either touch a wall or you take your shoes off and you just put your feet on the ground whether it be outside or wherever but uh you know that, that that's what i mean the energy the science behind that is you know you're becoming one it's kind of like if you ever watch avatar you know and uh, they have that tree i forget what it is but all those uh, blue aliens were in tune with the, their planet because it was a living. I'm Willis. Yeah. Denny AT Podcast. I'm Denny. Uh, Denny Podcaster. Uh, where are you from? Oh, okay. You know Rena? Yep. Pikachu? Pikachu? Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm one of the Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just, uh, yeah, if you're, uh, I'm still a little hesitant, as you can see, but um, I really enjoyed it. I was just talking to Tyler. There's a, a ton of ITEP grads here from like, 20, uh, 2009, 2010. Yeah. Um, actually, Ian is a fellow, my fellow uh, valedictorian for 2010. So, oh, really? yeah. And I feel yeah, so. Yeah. I feel so old when you say that. <laughs> well, imagine how old I feel. I was. I'm a, I'm a lot older than you. I know, but I was like this pregnant when I had my son. Now he's a university student at oh. UFS. <laughs> So I'm just like, oh my goodness, I really feel old now. <laughs> but uh, this is Shondon and Latea. They're my grade nine students, and they can fill you in on what they um, came up with for the science fair. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys, we're going to get you live. Remember, I won't get you too nervous about it. What's your name again? Latea. Shondon. All right. We are going to find out more. Is this your guys' too, part of this? Yeah. Okay, so... Who wants to start here? Who wants to be the spokesperson? We want to know everything about everything about everything. Apo oh, oh, Apology and healing. It's uh, the study of horses, horse anatomy, care, nutrition, and equipment. And horses can be used for a lot of things. Can you can you tell us your, your title first? Apology and healing. Okay. That's my okay, name. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, okay, I can see them. Yeah. How often do you uh, uh, feel to trim? Uh, get like the hoofs tri uh, trimmed because if they're too long, you'll the horse will actually like slip. So you you trim them like to five to eight weeks, depending on like what season it is or if it's. Do you know what? Really quick before you go into this. 
And this is something maybe you guys could watch. You ever watch people do that uh, trimming on uh, the hooves and stuff on, yeah, on YouTube? on the bottom. Yeah, I see all that. It's like one of those satisfying things to watch that you can just keep watching over and over. I don't know. I watch that. Yeah. And then they burn the hoofs, like the actual like hoof thing, onto the actual foot or the, the hoof of the thing. And they burn it on the thing. But the horses don't feel it because it's a nail. And naturally, you don't actually feel pain on your actual nail. So... So, so are the horses hooves? Are they the same thing as our nails here? Like, yeah, technically, because you know we don't feel pain when we take off our nails. So technically, they won't feel pain when you put on the because yet it's like burning the hoof, so they stick it onto there. So yeah, they don't actually feel pain on there. The horseshoe when they burn the horseshoe yeah. on there. Yeah. So. so did you do you work with horses lots? Is that why you guys came oh, up with yeah, this? I do. You do? Okay. So tell us uh, how, like, do you get to do the, all the cleaning of the horse's toes and everything? Do they call them, to, not toes, cha, hooves? Hooves? Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been uh, working around uh, horses? Since I was three years old. Since you were three? I started oh. riding when I was three years old. And then as I got older, I started racing Gymkhana. And then I started buying horses on my own. What? How old are you? Fourteen. 14 years old, she just said she buys horses on her own. Wow. I can't even buy a horse yet. So tell us more. Like, where is this your whole display here? These two? And we have a little video there. Can you tell us what's going on in that video? It's like to get a horse to go in circles, to trust you more, and to build the bond. Is that your horse? Yeah, that's my horse. What's the horse's name? Th White Thunder. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, how much horses does she have? I have about nine, and then I have some ponies with my friends. You own nine horses to yourself? No, not to myself. I share with my friends. Wow. And, you know, I, I, I did own a horse, and uh, but you always hear horse people, like you guys, saying how, how uh, therapeutic they are and how... Uh, healing they are can you explain some of that um well like what do you mean like when you're like you know how they bring kids around them like uh yeah. like uh kids that are having trouble at school and stuff and tough life and but they come around horses and horses really inspire them to be better and make them feel better and happy well as for myself, I could say it saved me from a lot of stuff. I was bullied ever since I started school. So ever since I was with horses, they saved me and they pushed me more to stay in school and do stuff like this. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what I'm talking about is like, uh, you know, horses, they are, they have like a, a nice spirit to them where yeah. it's calming and. You know, and you always see that's why people, when they start working with horses, they're always part of them, right? Yeah. And especially at a young age of three and you're 14 and you already ordered nine horses. All right. Can you tell us about hippology and healing more? Or what's going on here? What's one of these questions here? Can you get, am I, are we still in the shot? Why are horses sacred? They come from our grandmothers and our grandfathers. Uh, they were built for like... Oh, oh, they were built for uh, sand dances, and uh, you're not actually gonna buy a horse. You're actually supposed to be given, like, like passed down from your family. And uh, yeah, they they do for horse dances, and uh, they, you can uh, if you uh, everything has to be even. If it's not even, then your pairs won't be answered right away. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, what else do I hear? Where did horse dances originate from? Our ancestors and our grandfathers and grandmothers to honor the horse spirit. Nice. I'm just going off the board here. So some good questions. Uh, oh, I like this one. So and remember we were talking about the horses being uh, uh, healing and everything. So what is the healing process? Remember I was asking you about, you know, how it's like therapeutic and everything. And uh, sorry, I forget your name. Natea was saying, you know, it, it, she she used to be bullied and stuff, and, and having horses was really healing to her. So can you tell us, uh, like, when you're on horses, like, how, how, how do they heal you, I guess? Well, 
honestly, when I'm around them, I just feel happy and like it just pushes me more to do stuff. And then like everything I do at home, it's just with horses. And then if once I'm done working with one horse, I'm on to the other. Or me and my friends are on to the others. Horses have helped me through obstacles that I've endure, endured through my tough years of life. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, what else we got here? What is, what's this horses again? The ones that are white and uh, I'm going to come into the camera shot. Paints. The ones that are white and brown. Those are paints. And what's specialized about them? What's so special about a paint horse? Well, they're puzzled colors. And then they're like the most, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so can you tell us something about the saddle here? And I see you have a nice design. This ain't a saddle, this saddle pad. Yeah, that's for this to keep the horses back from getting sore from the saddle. So that's more padding. For so is, is there a story behind this one here? This one? Yeah, this. this whole this whole outfit. Well, it's just to help us ride. And this is for like when you go up hills and like, you know how the saddle slips back? Yeah. It'll keep it placed where it's supposed to be. And is this just for uh, to keep the horse comfortable? Yeah, from the saddle. Because it's like how it's metal and stuff and has lots of nails. So you just put a couple saddle pads under the saddle. Riding horses since she was three. And she's 14 now, and she has nine horses with friends, she says so. And you, how many horses do you own? I don't, I don't, I don't ride horses. No? No. Sue? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I want to thank you guys uh, for showing us this. And, uh, yes, teach more about the horses because they are healing. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a young lady, and I know that uh, this is guaranteed to give me a future of yours. It already is part of your life, by the sounds of it. And uh, it's nice to share stories of more of how horses uh, do help everyone. Yeah. Anything you guys want to say to your fans? <laughs> I don't think I have any fans. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I guess we're going to head over to here now and uh, we'll catch you guys soon again. All righty, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. So we are going to take it back to the testing. We're going to bring it back over here and uh, entertain you guys here for a little bit while uh, we let some of the judging happen and then... Uh,
All right, we're live again. Making sure we're good here. Testing. All right, we are good. All right, we're going to keep going here. We uh switching cameras here like you guys. Live, anything can happen, and uh, we're just going with it. So we're going to keep going here. Where did we go? So we got Tia Tatuasis here who wants to say a few words. <laughs> Tia, just say hi. Hi. <laughs> so what are you thinking so far of your students uh, participating here? Uh, no, it's right in my face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. This is live? Oh, no, it's a really good experience. They're having fun. They're in the robotics center over there. Oh, yeah, we're going to go over there. Yeah, they're sitting right there. So, have you, have, have you checked out the VR yet? No, I haven't. It's one thing I think all teachers should go look at. Something you guys should bring to your principal. That one too, but over there. And just see what they're doing with their classroom stuff. You just go walk right in there. Saying hi to my brother Gordon here. You're live. What do you think of the science fair? He's just, uh, are you here as a guest or? No, my son is here. Okay. So Gordon... Haskman from Sweetgrass First Nation, a.k.a. the man with the plan who, uh, wicked, wicked, wicked carpenter and pool player. So tell us so far about uh, the science, science fair. It's really nice. It's good. You should be used to being interviewed here. <laughs> I know my uh, stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So is there anything, uh, any any one of these things, uh, projects that uh, stood out so far? Mm. Oh, tough. That you want us to go look at? Just got here, yeah. Oh, he just got here, okay. Well, I'm going to come stop in again here after uh, Gordon uh, has a look, so we'll see you soon, brother. All right, so you guys, we're going to walk and walk. Follow, follow. So we got First Nations Community Household Walk. I think we did this one, right? Or we just looked at it. None that we'll we'll come back to this one. You guys ain't students, eh? <laughs> All right, we'll come back here. But I do want to check out. Uh, I do want to check out uh, over here. We're gonna check out. I forget what this is in here. Science Center. It's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. We are live. So. We're coming to check out uh, coming to check out the uh, Saskatchewan Science Center. Saskatchewan Science Center. There we go. So what is your name? My name is Ben. Hello. Hi, Ben. And what is your name? I'm Matt. Hi there. So Ben We're uh, teaching everyone here how to work with uh, we're working with technology. So we actually have uh, three different things that we're doing. The first one are the cubelets, these uh, individual little blocks that work uh, to make things work in different ways. So the girls there are making uh, some robots that just kind of spin around. Uh, the other two things that we have going on, uh, we actually have uh, two different kinds of program uh, uh, programmed video games that we can play with. So what are you what are you doing with these things? Oh, nope, sure, Matt, you take it away. Okay, so uh, what we have is actually, there's three blocks that really matter for these. So there's a, a battery block, blue, there's a little black one for a knob, and then there's a little action one. So how would I use the flashlight if I can find it. Hey, there we go. So as I turn the knob, it gets uh, brighter and everything, and it starts working uh, in different ways. So there's all sorts of different ways that we can kind of put these together to make some cool little robots. So let me see if I can get... So what is this teaching the students the, uh, with all these little blocks? Uh, well, with these, what it's doing is that it's actually showing kind of how to make uh, basically different parts of a program. So uh, in this case, it's a lot of things like uh, showing if it gets closer <laughs> or farther away. <laughs> um, it's showing kind of uh, in very physical ways how to quickly make uh, different robots that will do different things. So in cases for these, some of the, some of the kids are making ones that spin around. They make little helicopters or fun little driving things. Yeah. Uh, some of them make little robots that have you know arms that spin or start making weird noises. Uh, you want to get a shot of that, Riley? There, were, it's it's the, we got a runaway train here with uh, <laughs> this robot thing. 
Yeah. Um, so these ones are a really cool way that uh, we can actually go to schools and actually teach kind of uh, kids how to make just different kinds of technologies in quick little uh, sorts of ways. Uh, then we have two other things which uh, are actually showing game creation. That is interesting because we all know that uh, gaming is huge now. And uh, imagine just creating your own game. One, you could have come super rich, but two, it's like cool if you're bored. Oh, I'm going to make a game. Yeah, it's something where like uh, these are games that I made in roughly about 25, 30 minutes. And uh, this one of them is uh, one that you might remember, Asteroids. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's something that's like this is actually professional software that uh, other video games use. And we actually are showing off kind of how it works uh, and kind of the different ways that you can make it into your own sort of thing to, you know, maybe get rich. So do you have to be a mathematical genius? Because I failed <laughs> general math. Like, like what, what are kind of smarts do you think you got to bring in here? And never mind that I failed general math. Anything is possible, no matter what. Like, even if you failed biology you can become the greatest scientist in the world or you failed health you can become the greatest doctor nurse whatever in the world absolutely so uh i actually have a degree in biology so in that case uh i don't <laughs> well it's something where uh i i personally don't have a huge amount of experience with doing a lot of coding but nowadays they actually have things called blockly where you can actually see the code as it's being made and you don't have to type in all the stuff from i don't know if you remember having to do any coding back in school but i know i i come from the era of uh typewriter ah uh, yeah i'm a lot older than i look so it, me too um black and white computers so yeah. uh Not even computers man legit typewriter man where yeah. the the arm came like this and hit the ink that's like yeah. yeah it's it's something where like nowadays we can get kids into coding a lot sooner because they don't have to know exactly how to write out that stuff it's all just visually something that you can kind of look at and uh learn how to do you know game creation which can learn and uh spin into doing lots of other things is, is that sorry is that html um, not for this one. Uh, these ones here that we're using uh, use something uh, either called uh, Python or JavaScript, um, but they're using it in very simple visual ways. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Matt right, and yeah. Ben. Uh, I'm going to ask these youth here a few questions. Why me? Uh, you're just standing there and you got all the cool colors. What's your name? <laughs> My name's Angel. Angel. Tell me what you've learned so far at the Science Center. And what do you think of this cool stuff? It's very cool and epic. Epic. <laughs> yes, very epic. So what is epic about learning how to build games? Mm, I don't know. I'll take that as a no, where are you from? George Gordon. George Gordon. All right. So we're going to come back to once you learn more of uh, we had a runnery train here, but you just missed it. It was like going all over. So thank you guys, Ben and Matt. It's like I just want to like Ben and Jerry ice cream. I want to say. I wish my name was Jerry. All right. So thanks, you guys. We're gonna skip through here. We're not supposed to. I think you might even have better if you want to shorten the legs or whatever. Or this, I think, comes up in the middle. Help you out. Come through the magic doors. All right. So this is SIT where I didn't. I forgot. Indian Institute of Technologies, and we got Kaylee McGregor here. So, Kaylee, tell us about SIT and what you guys are doing here. Hi. So, um, we're here with our aircraft uh, maintenance engineering program. So, we've actually brought a simulator in, which Cindy is running. She's awesome. Um, so, this program, it's a two-year program available just actually at the Saskatoon Airport, just outside at one of their hangars. And yeah, um, feel free to check out the <laughs> the simulator. It's so awesome. But yeah, is there anything else? <laughs> no, I was I was looking at that thing and I was saying I wanted to go. I don't know if I can fit in there, but uh, we'll try to get Willis in there. Maybe he's a little yeah, slimmer. It's awesome. it's yeah. Really? That is cool. So there you guys go. It's a two-year program, and and all of a sudden you can fly planes. Yep. So two-year program, 
program. It's an apprenticeship apprenticeship program. So we give you 18 months of uh, schooling, and then from there you do an additional uh, apprenticeship program, and then you can write your test. Your and then you can be certified across the world. So you can uh, use this, uh, become an engineer anywhere. Some of you might not even have your own license here, <laughs> but if you get your plane license, you can fly all over the world. <laughs> right? Hey, why not? <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, hey, Kaylee. Yes. And thank uh, you. we're going to go check with the plane here. The plane. Aircraft maintenance engineer. That's what this thing is? Awesome. Aircraft. If you guys are interested, aircraft maintenance engineer. All right. We're going to check this out. Well, she's, uh, sorry, what's your name real quick? Cindy. All right, we're live right now, so go ahead, keep peep on. All right, well, I uh, promise if you crash, it won't hurt. So, uh, you can pick any type of aircraft you'd like. There's small aircraft, helicopters. We even have little glider things here for you. I got a quick question. Is this part of the training when they take aircraft maintenance? So we do use simulators to trouble, uh, like do troubleshooting and crash. Um, sorry, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? Um, we do use simulations in order to do troubleshooting and schematics and all that. We don't typically use this one. This is for trade show purposes. We actually have a fully encompassed um, simulator that looks like a Boeing 737, like a commercial aircraft. You would sit in the cockpit and it's the entire Saskatoon area. It's like, it looks like you're flying in a real aircraft. And so they use that for troubleshooting, but that's not located at our downtown campus. It's actually located up by the airport. So, which is where all of our aircraft maintenance engineering takes place. So, yeah. Cool. All right. We're going to just watch you uh, go through uh, sure. what you're doing with this young lady here. VR, you guys, VR is where it's at. Virtual reality here at SIIT, aircraft maintenance engineer. This young lady is going to fly. And by the sounds of it, you can, oh, 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 remember, you can get certified in two years to fly all over the world. So you're, you want to put it in the middle so that it's, there you go. Good. Keep it like that. Pull up, pull up. So close. Okay, so what we're going to do is put the throttle all the way down. Yeah, all of them. You can put all of them down. And then we'll start you on the runway from scratch. Okay? <laughs> so, so if you guys are in a Saskatoon area, you guys can come and check this out here. It is free. Everything is free. You can come learn to fly a plane. And if you want to change careers, SIIT. Is there? And then you want to push into the middle of the so that your aircraft is level. And then to tip side to side, you're going to go like this. But in order to view differently, to turn, is you're going to use your pedal. Okay, so to stop spinning, you're going to press your uh, interesting right, right pedal to stop the thing spinning and then go down. I wish you like to zoom in. We're going to zoom right into the cockpit here, you guys, and check it out. There's legit pedals in there. Wow. That is cool. So she's got her flying thing there. She's got some buttons. So legit flying a game, but I mean, you're flying in a legit cockpit. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. There you guys go. The yellow plane that could... Um, give me a thumbs up there, Willis. How we doing? Okay, we're still doing good. Trying to get uh, some random people here to interview. Uh, what other room did we miss? Oh, the virtual. I want to show you guys something. I want to show you guys this virtual reality room, and then uh, we're gonna go back and uh. And get if to you Willis look here. over to the green there, that's where you see me sitting down. Well, so I'm going to do one more room here, and then I'll come back. All right. We got, uh, I got my co here. I won't put her in the spot. 
All right, here we got uh, the virtual reality room. We have we have Jobina. I told her I was gonna get her on the camera. So Jobina, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do, all the good stuff. Don't talk about crypto. So Amba Washte, Midak Yapi. I come from Mosquito Grizzly Bears Head, Lean Man First Nation. We bring five students. One was um, me. I'm Anthony. Don't speak to me. Oh, God. Well, I'm epic. So what was your Don't. project? Pepsi. What is all, it all about, though? How it affects the body. And what do you, else did you find out? I found out diabetes. Yeah. So the causes of everything that Pepsi does to you. And then we had other students that came in and did um, crystals. And they love that project. Thanks. Look at that. Hey, that's a woman in power in charge. She just took the mic and did her thing. So thank you, Jovina. Um, so here I, I, I really interested in this, this virtual reality thing. I do work at a school. I'm a counselor there. And I always said, I think we should get virtual reality headsets in there. And my boss is watching. <clears throat> yeah. So we're going to find out more about the virtual reality here. I'm just butting in. So go ahead. We are live here. There's one million people watching. So go ahead. What's your name? I'm Maureen. Maureen. And what is uh, your purpose here with all this? So, these things people are putting on their face. I know. So well, we're with Sci-Fi Science Camps. We're out of the College of Engineering at the University of Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. And this is virtual reality using Google headsets. And a while ago, we downloaded from Google Expeditions a couple of expeditions. So this allows you to have a virtual field trip. Mm -hmm. So we have just been exploring the Jurassic period and looking at dinosaurs and the rise of plants from um, the beginning to the end of the late Jurassic. Yeah, and I actually did try one of these and I was uh, looking at, was that Saturn? Yeah, New Jupiter. Or sorry, it was Jupiter. I and then Jupiter. I went to Jupiter and there's a satellite there. And uh, you can actually... You're, can, you, can you pick that up and show everyone that you can actually run it through? So there's the, um, the tablet. The tablet is connected to the headset. And the teacher can actually control where the students go. So. And it's run through Google. Well, before it was Google. Google Expeditions. But there's a couple of ones that have taken Google's uh, Expeditions place. One is um, VR Expeditions or Expeditions Pro. Just look around. There's some free stuff out there as well that's sort of tried to fill in that that gap. Mm -hmm. And there are other ones that are subscription based. We're still looking at how to replace Google Expeditions, but the teacher can actually control where the students see. So if you want to talk about molten lava, this will immediately direct all the headsets to look at the molten lava. So you can teach your lesson about molten lava. If you want to talk about cooled lava, which forms igneous rocks, igneous rocks, um, it's here. And so then you can sort of transition to talking about that with your geo lessons. You want to talk about volcanoes, it'll bring it up to there. I'm not sure if that's showing very well. Yeah. Um, so you can structure your lesson plans accordingly using sort of multimedia, like you guys are using multimedia. Yeah, just like this, how we're thinking outside of the box, doing exactly. this, doing this uh, interviews and stuff. Is this is game changing, and there is money out there through grants and stuff that you can can access. And how would they get a hold of you if they have more questions? You can contact us um, through our website at uh, sci-fi.science.camps mm -hmm. um, at usask.ca, or you can contact us. What's our website? Uh www.scifi.usask.ca. And uh, usask.ca. Yeah. Right. So we do free school workshops um, in and around Saskatoon. We travel uh, as much as two hours outside um, in May and June. Uh, we do go up to La Ronge to Precambrian and Gordon Denny because we love La Ronge. And um, probably the fishing, eh? <laughs> maybe. And, um, and they're just great kids. Yeah. So, and we do summer camps uh, both on campus and we have summer camps in different communities as well. So there you guys go. They travel two hours within around Saskatoon. Correct. 
and you guys get to do cool stuff like this with VR. And hey, we got to start thinking outside the box to do future stuff like this. You know, do hybrid, uh, obviously from traditional teachings. You know, to bring in the science of stuff. So uh, it's just a, a new way to do things. And actually, a young uh, young students over there did something about yep. VR, yep. and they were just showing that you you people were learning more. Or paying more attention, I should say, because they were interested and, and they were center focused with this. So cool stuff. So I want to thank you very much. Very and uh, we're going to move. If your folks are in the southern part of the province, we have a sister organization through the University of Regina called Eyes. And they do school workshops as well. And they run summer camps as well. And they sort of cover the southern part of the province. So check them out as well. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank you. There yeah. you guys go. So we're going to, can we walk through here? You bet. All right. We're going to walk through here and see what's through here bypassing the doors oh we got uh some sweet crass kids here we're coloring we're gonna get to you guys there but we're gonna come here and learn about lego really quick so what's your name there my name is john john how's it going good tell us uh what's going on you are live eh? we're live so we're not pre-recording this is the actual live so don't get too nervous. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I am putting you on the spot. So tell us what's going on here. So we got some Edison robots here that are set up for a sumo wrestling. So what the kids can do is build Lego on top of these robots here. They're Lego compatible. So you can snap your Lego on there and then put them in the ring and they'll try to push each other out. And last man standing wins. Can we see a battle? Sure. Yeah. All right. We're going to watch a battle here. And... Uh, Remember, this is at FSIN Science Fair here in Saskatoon at the Prairie Land Exhibition Hall A. And it's free. And this is what you learn, science-y stuff. So what they'll do is they'll bounce each side of the quarters. And as soon as they see each other, they're going to try to push each other out of the ring. Jobina, stum. You're not on camera. You're just on the mic. I want to hear your your thoughts on this. No. Why? It's pretty cool. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so there we got. We have Lego. So what are they just trying to smash into each other or avoid each other? They'll uh, they'll see each other, and as soon as they see someone in front of them, they'll push as hard as they can. Otherwise, they're just pushing the whole time and then staying inside of the. Ring. So what's that show called? Robo Wars or something? Oh yeah, Battle Box. Battle Box. So you guys, it's similar to Battle Box where they're like smashing each other. It's Lego Battle Box, essentially. Yeah. So this is just built straight out of Lego. Yep. Yeah. So uh, like this is the robot itself. There's like not a ton to it, but it's all the brains to it. As soon as you put your Lego on there to help it push, you're done. That's it. Wow, that is cool. Yeah. And you can do different things with them. Like you can program them to be controlled with a remote or they can uh, be programmed on the computer. Um, they can follow a line that you draw on the ground. They'll follow a, a flashlight. You can you can do a ton with these guys. They're just set up for the sumo bots right now. Got a few that are falling off there. Oh, they're rugged too. So <laughs> yeah, they're not, they can... not going to break. <laughs> nice. So there you guys go. So you're with the U. Sorry, you're with SAS Code. We're code, yeah. Okay. Part of the SIEC. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, John. And uh, we're going to move on to over here. I think we're going to be chatting with Bill. Bill. <laughs> Bill's busy trying to catch all these uh, things here. So uh, we're just going to wait for Bill here. Uh, so you guys having fun so far? Let's come on this side here there, Riley. And uh, interview my cousin's daughter, my niece. Put it, putting you on the spot. Hey, everyone can't shy. You want that? See, everyone's shy. So we're going to wait for Bill here. Looks like, uh, what is actually going on here? Oh, it's what? What you doing here? Right there is color those uh, same patterns. And on the paper, it follows... And you put this, uh, if you hold that bot up there, around the paper. Yeah. Oh, if this bot stays right here? And then it does that. So it's, it's 
codes that tells you. Oh, code. Oh, it's, so. Whatever it says there. Turbo. That's what you color in. And oh, I see. Bill. Oh. <laughs> tell us what's going on here. Here, let's follow this one. So this is a little story map. Ozobot's going to follow it. And it's going to do all the different types of codes. So this one will make it do a little fancy move, like a spin. So it's all the colors are just, once it runs it over, it's saying, this is what you got to do. That's right. So that one's going to tell it to speed up. It's going to pause at Granny's house because that's the code the student chose. And it's going to slow down. And then it's going to make its way back home. I got a quick question. Yes. So... Obviously, we know that Tesla self-drives and Google's getting into it. Is this is this what they use, like the color code? Uh, no, uh, self-code would use uh, op object detection uh, sensors, either using sound waves or light waves and checking reflection. This this can do that. This is where the guys at Google started, though. Yes. They, they learned this simple stuff first, right? That is absolutely correct. Learn the simple and fun stuff, and then you can make the the, the great stuff that's going to make you a lot of money someday. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> this little thing, like like you said, I was saying, like uh, you know, everyone knows Tesla. Well, if you don't, it's like the self-driving electrical cars. And uh, yeah, I was telling Bill, like, is this where they start? So, yeah, can you imagine that something like small like that can make you learn how to program an actual car? That's right. So what else we got going on here? Is that all of this is what, what it is? Is all coding? This one uses color codes, and you can also use these blocks here to make it do things. So I can slide these blocks out and click them together, and I can code the Ozobot using blocks too. So we can start with colors, and then the kids can learn how to block using a – or code using a computer. So coding now, is it like – you know how websites becoming drag and drop to build? Is it kind of is that how uh, coding starting to become? At the uh, introductory level, yes, and then kids learn from block building and then find out the text that goes with those blocks after when they probably get into grade twelve or even university. But a lot of drag and drag and drop blocks. Yeah, no, that's very interesting because uh, it would be nice to have a bunch of uh, indigenous uh, people coding and. You know, learning, you know, learning from this blocking build, but you always hear the geniuses like Zuckerberg and all the, all of them who learned how to code when they're like five, you know? Yeah. We just want to get kids coding any way possible. So if it's using markers, a computer, or this one in grade uh, kindergarten to grade one, two, it's just using direction arrows. And they press a go button, and then they can learn how to get uh, problem solve these mice to go from point A to point B using uh, direction codes. So pre K and kindergarten, you said? You betcha. So wow. They start this in kinder, well, pre K, but we usually start them in kindergarten, grade one and grade two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Bill, for this cool thing. And uh, what is this, real quick, before oh, we. Uh, a 3D printer. Oh, an actual 3D printer. Yeah. So students can design projects using this uh, computer-assisted design program. Yeah, we're okay. just going to get the camera on there to show what's going on there. We'll use Tinkercad to design different things. They can design a keychain or, in this case, a cat that has movable parts. That's what we're building right now. Or pens. They put the file into there, and the 3D printer makes a three-dimensional object uh, based on student design. That is amazing. Can I touch this thing here? Oh, for sure. So that one we brought here and it fell off of the 3D printer. That was the one we were going to show. Oh, but yeah. once it falls off the printer, we can't orient it again. So that would have been a bust. So people are actually building houses with these things, right? They are. Uh, something bigger than this, of course. But a lot of, like, they'll build houses. But they'll also now design neighborhoods and homes using this because it's three-dimensional. And you can see the size of the rooms to scale and stuff. Wow. So imagine, I know small homes, tiny homes are kind of like starting to become a big discussion, especially within the indigenous communities. Is this something you think that could be forged ahead going for the future? Well, I think so. 
possibilities for everything are endless, right? And we have to uh, embrace technology and then find out how it fits into into our way of life, I guess, right? And and then accept it and and make it work for us. Yeah, so there you guys go. All you got to do is start with a little pen and some coding over there and then Legos and learn the battle there and then work your way up to doing 3D modeling. And who knows, maybe you'll be bringing that to an Indigenous community your own home community or, or surrounding communities and building tiny homes with 3D modeling. So I want to thank you, Bill, for coming thank on. And much, we'll man. probably be stopping in again, though. So, awesome. all right, thanks. All right, Willis, we're coming back to you, I think. And then uh, we'll finish off with the uh, science fair here after. All right. Alrighty, we're back here with uh, Dene Yati, right here live at the uh, FSIN First Nations Science Fair. You just had a few uh, presentations from over, uh, which one was that one there? The Let's Talk Science, no, Science Center. Oh, was it late last one? Yeah. So those are the science workshops anyways. Uh, you know, the, the cool stuff about uh, teaching kids about codes and, uh, you know, building all these little infrastructures, uh, you know, the, it when you add all that stuff together, you can just build some great minds, you know. So, uh, you know, for this afternoon, we might... Uh, I'm just going to have to double check here. We, we, we might be signing off and coming back in the evening for a uh, keynote speaker, Dr. Herman Mitchell. And then possibly we're going to double check here. We're going to double check here about uh, there is a magician here tonight. And uh, we're going to see if we're able to bring that live to you for the people at home uh, to see some uh, the magician. He is from Saskatoon, Chance Gonzalez. And uh, don't be shy. If you're in Saskatoon here, come on down to the Prairie Land Park. We are uh, going to be live here all day. Or sorry, this evening for the uh, keynote speaker for sure. And then uh, maybe the magician. So I, I will have a word for you guys in a second. And uh, yeah, once again, if you're in Saskatoon, come on down. And uh, we're going to bring in Barry. Barry Shingus is going to talk to him. You going to talk to him? We're going to learn the ways of the uh, Soto. He is from Cody's First Nation, way down south, Treaty 4 territory. And uh, we're going to chat with him a bit about, uh, you know, some of the uh, stories and uh, the legends he carries with him. He's been... Uh, Organizing this event here. He is the organizer of the FSI and Science Fair here today. You know, one of the things, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of uh, ribbon skirts here, you know, a lot of uh, uh, creative people, you know, showcasing their uh, talent when, uh, when it comes to making ribbon skirts and, and all that crafty stuff. So. Uh. So we've got, uh, he's just like s sitting down slowly here, his whole body Ooh. cracking. We've got Barry Shin Goose here. Welcome uh, to the live stream here. I'll just ask you to introduce yourself and uh, we'll listen to your story. Good afternoon. Barry Shin Goose here from Cody First Nation. Uh, FSIN lead judge. Um, 2022 hybrid science fair. Uh, yeah. Cool. Good job. You know, it's uh first first time, I guess, uh, back in uh, person. How, how's it going for you? Oh, sweating like uh, I don't think I've been on my feet so long. You know, virtual, keeping that virtual for those last two years. All you've been doing was sitting down in front of a computer, right? Yeah. So this is what I miss running around the pandemonium, you know, the confusion, you know, but it all balances it out with the with the people 
you trying know, to work it all out being the in-person exactly yeah 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 it's good it's good it's uh, uh it's quite a big turnout i mean this is the first one i've ever been to but uh you know we've uh they serve breakfast here today lunch and then we got uh you know all the youth of uh, all over saskatchewan you know just hanging out uh, making new friends Exactly, and a uh, majority of our projects didn't show up to, you know, considering probably the weather and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, it's harder for some people to travel and get down this way, so, but we did have a good turnout, I think we had 30 projects, 8 projects virtual, so the virtual component went went smoothly, um, we're, just, we're just finishing up with our uh, senior levels, the grade 9, 10, and 11, and 12s, so... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's good to see that we have the majority of traditional knowledge projects too on board. You know, mm -hmm. it's starting to take over, which is what we like to see. So good job on the kids that are that are uh, repping the traditional knowledge in the science field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. And we we're talking to Tina, I believe, earlier. You know, maybe you see something one day where it's all a traditional science put together affair and you know all about the traditional knowledge in all the different nations well how, how ali bear put it this morning was what uh, traditional knowledge is embedded in science and western science is embedded in traditional knowledge you know i really like that how she put that and that is so true you know a lot of western science bounces off traditional knowledge you know like if you look way back you know pre pre fur trade right Mm -hmm. A lot of the sciences that they got, you know, the med medicines and stuff came from our people, you know, and our people were the ones that 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 were helpful and, and shared this knowledge with them. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we didn't look at it in a, in a Western way, right? We looked at it in a way, in a, in a way of sharing our knowledge and, and helping one yeah. another out, right? Yeah. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're sharing our knowledge and helping, and helping one another out. Yeah, and, and, and then to get the, uh, you know, the youth to get... To give them a voice, you know, to be able to present to people and, and not be shy. And, you know, of course, we're all shy as uh, Indigenous people, but we just got to get out of it. You know, we're given exactly. that space. So, you know, um, I know you've, uh, you know, a lot of traditional uh, knowledge from your territory way down south. And uh, maybe you can share some of that with us and uh, maybe put the science and the traditional together to uh, how they come together with the stories you carry. Well, growing up, you know, like I, I followed my roots, right? So I, I've always had a, had knowledge in that background, right? So and then getting educated too, I'm able to put the two together and, you know, find out how I can make the two work together, you know, and find out things that, that help them work together. But, you know, really my, my calling was uh, Indigenous astronomy, right? Like having the opportunity to, to work with FSIN or, or, or do work with them and, and travel around to different territories and and learn different stories for from from the from the sky. You know that's that's really where it's at, where my passion is at is, is is bringing back that star knowledge, right? Bringing back that you know our people knew how to see the outside world. You know how the mentor, how my mentor um, Wilfred Buck put it was that the Roman and Greeks were just the lucky ones to get it put in the textbooks. You know. That knowledge from indigenous cultures all over the world, the Chinese, the Hindu, First Nations, the 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 Nasdaq or the Aztecs and all that, like all that all that star knowledge is grounded in that with them, right? So um how I put it there was, you know, there some were lucky to get in a textbook, some weren't. Ours got our knowledge got pushed aside, you know, and uh, and that's where I see our fire needed to be lit. We need to bring that knowledge back out, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very interesting, you know, and I, uh, maybe you can share some, uh, maybe something about one of the, you know, star uh, stories with us, because uh, I'm very new to that, too. And I've always, you know, I'm Denny. So I was told that, uh, you know, we had some of those stories, too, about the stars and constellation, I believe. Uh, as the right term but uh you know maybe you can share some of that with us here well more or less I'll, I'll share like like some of the things that i do like we were trying to get the planetarium going there but it's been giving us problems we are a remote that controls the the dome is 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 not functioning properly oh, okay but when we're in there we're able to we're able to zoom in on on certain constellations and a lot of these different constellations have different stories you know like pleiades the north star um the big dipper the little dipper 
Seg Segnes, uh, all these all all these uh, stars or constellations in the sky have a story to them, right? And it's kind of hard sitting here talking about it. I have to I have to either be outside looking at them or else have you know have a visual talking about them. Like, mm -hmm. You know, it makes it easier because then the story can kind of come together. Yeah. And kind of see the connection with the stories and how each constellation is connected with it, with, with each other. So Okay. So what, uh, you know, maybe one thing, uh, uh, what did it mean to the, your Soto, correct? Yeah, yeah. Soto. So the, to the Soto Nation, what did the Big, Deep, Big, Big Dipper mean? Or did it mean everything? In Again, there's a lot of different like uh, perspectives with that so um i don't really want to get into it right now with it but um like my head's right my head's all over right now right it's yeah, not yeah, it's yeah. not it's not in the storytelling right now yeah yeah it's in the judging trying to manage like everything I'm, right now i'm sitting here talking to you but i'm looking over there watching the watching the judges to make sure <laughs> that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and, yeah. and, and finishing yeah, up right them. so i'm gonna yell at so them. my head's my head's not in the storytelling <laughs> element right now but Maybe maybe for a future podcast that can be one of your oh yeah one for of sure your, one of your things that you want to look into yeah you know and, and I think it's very important to uh, share that with everybody too it might uh, you know um, spark in some somebody that's listening to say hey I want to look into the stuff right exactly like that's the whole point you know like uh, telling these stories to the kids you know <laughs> one of them might go home and ask their cook them or mush them you know and really start looking into it and you know, get their fire lit inside of them and to pursue, you know, indigenous astronomy. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good stuff. Nezun. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Barry Shingus, for uh, joining me here. I'll let you get back to judging. Right on. And, uh, you know, we'll find out about the evening program here tonight. And uh, maybe we'll have him back uh, tomorrow after uh, everything's all done. Word. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep. Uh, oh, so there you guys go. We've got... Um, we just had Barry Shin Goose here join us here. Uh, he has been organizing this event and judging the participants here at the uh, science fair. It, it is, uh, we are live at the Prairie Land Park, First Nation, FSIN First Nation Science Fair. Come on down here to uh, Hall A. If you are in Saskatoon, don't be shy. We've got a keynote speaker here tonight, Dr. Herman Mitchell. And uh, dinner will be served. It is a plated service. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of plate. Uh, we, I think we had some uh, chicken here. Guess by chicken. Chicken, chicken now almost tastes like KFC, but. Uh, okay, so I think the judging has wrapped up. Oh, judging's wrapped up. For Tuesday, March 22nd. In? So. I was just gonna tell them that if you're if you're done, that you can go back to the hotel room. Oh, okay. I'm not kicking everybody out again. So I just wanted to let you know if you're done getting judged, you have three signatures in front of your display. Then you have the option of going back to the hotel room, chilling out, whatever, till uh, till six o'clock, till the banquet, and then come back, or you can just hang around here. No matter to me, but. Be pretty boring. All right, so there you guys go. It sounds like this is going to be the end of the podcast. Not today, as we will be coming live again, because uh, what's happening tonight again? We're going to have some keynotes we and a magician. Uh, we don't know about the magician, but uh, we'll be back live here at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, with uh, keynote speaker dr herman mitchell he's gonna be i'm not sure exactly what time he's speaking but uh we will be live again and then we've got a magician we're gonna find out if we're able to uh, check in with him and see if we're able to stream oh, right. some of it yeah. and then uh if not uh so it looks if like not, willis is gonna be a magician and you guys yeah, are gonna see uh, him and disappear <laughs> i'm gonna disappear <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so for now we're gonna sign off and uh we welcome you back at six o'clock we'll be uh maybe maybe five ten minutes early so we can get everything going but there's gonna be a dinner here tonight come on down prairie land park hall a 
for the uh, FSIN First Nations Science Fair. All the kids here are joining us here today. So I want to say Masi Cho for joining us this afternoon, and uh, we'll see you all later. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, it's been a blast so far. Uh, who? Let's go.